This is a curb blog. That's what this is. I'm with the Eggman to talk about the biz. How do you like? I came up with that like about ten minutes ago. You, did you like that? I get the reference. <laughs> That's good. I get it. I get it. I'm going to leave now and never come back. <laughs> Welcome well, everybody. By the entire internet at times. Well, I yeah, I know. I'm sure nobody's ever done that joke to you before. Ever. That would be silly in what 15 years? My God. Welcome everybody to Voice October 2016, or, or I should say rather, uh, we're, we're now into the first week of November, so I'm declaring this Voice Overtime. This is where I've been continuing to interview various voice acting veterans from the U.S. and Canada, learn about the history of how they started and where they started. Uh, for the last installment of this year's Voice October interview series of stuff that I've been doing, uh, I have decided to save the best for last, and by best I mean my old stomping grounds of New York City and the East Coast in general. Joining me today, uh, quite fittingly so, pardon me, he is the voice of Adon from the Berserk series and trilogy of movies, countless, countless Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh characters, Langston Lake and Toad on Viva Pinata, the garbage man on the 2003 Ninja Turtle series, personal favorite of mine because I'm biased, Don Teablo in Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin. And of course, he is also, I, I believe, if I'm correct, the longest running English voice of Dr. Eggman from the Sonic the Hedgehog video games and animations and movies and various things. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Pollock. Hi, Michael. Oh, is that who you're expecting? Well, yes. I guess then that's who I'll be. <laughs> Hi there. Yes, uh, you're correct. It's been 13 years of Dr. Eggman, and boy, is my larynx tired. <laughs> well, the, the fans are, are not tired as far as I'm concerned. They're very happy that you have been sticking with this, uh, this, this voluptuous, sexy villain for now well over a decade now, and you've been doing a splendid job with him and, and many, many other things. Um, this was very last second. We're recording this on, what is this, Wednesday night? This is going up on Saturday. Uh, two other folks I had planned fell out, and then I thought, wait a minute, Michael is, is, is absolutely a veteran. He would do this. I should, I should go to him for this. Why didn't I think of him before? I'm a fool. And it's funny because I believe it was about 10 years ago, maybe even more than that now, that I interviewed you on another podcast that will be unnamed, but some people probably know which one it is. Um, but that, and which also means that for better or worse, Sonic 06 is 10 years old, isn't it? Uh, yes, I suppose it is. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Happy <laughs> said no one ever. Said me. <laughs> said just, me. Yeah. Said me and my, and my I, heinous relationship with that game. My God. Um, so, uh, I'll get the generic crap all out of the way. I'm sure you've answered this on every panel interview you've ever done in the last 13 years, but... Uh, brief history, how you started in your, your early days, your radio days, and then leading into uh, your, your, your VO career, the, the beginning. Take us back, please. Sure. I'll try to make it interesting this time. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, as a kid, I grew up loving radio and loving theater. Did school theater as a child and uh, dabbled in radio from high school on through college. And uh, as I uh, got into college, and I was thinking, well, let's see, I could be theater or I could be radio. There's not a lot of theater work that's real steady, and there's things are only slightly steadier in radio because you could be fired, as I learned later in my career, for reasons such as not being rock and roll enough. <laughs> but at least with a radio job, you, you can usually work five days a week, roughly from nine to five, and have somewhat steady employment. Mm -hmm. So I chose radio. Wanted to minor in theater at Syracuse University. Hey, if you're listening, Syracuse. But at Syracuse, <laughs> you, you can't minor in theater. You must <laughs> major in it. Well, no, that's not real practical. So radio was the thing. And uh, I was a disc jockey of sorts for a while and did various personality shifts, did some production making commercials, and realized that what I really enjoyed was making the wacky voices in the commercials. So... When radio turned from radio station work to radio syndication work, uh, writing comedy and stuff completely anonymously for radio stations around the country, um, and then eventually uh, radio decided, oh, we don't need you anymore, uh, I was able to collect some of my voices from some of the comedy bits that I'd written and some of the commercials that I had done, made a demo tape, and uh, decided, let's go with plan B, 
and sent out a demo cassette at the time to uh, such diverse places as NYAV Post, producer of uh, many anime things. Uh, they gave me my first gig in the highly forgettable Demon Fighter Kocho. Um, and then the next thing that went out was uh, picked up by the folks producing Pokemon at the time. Four Kids, who eventually made Four Kids TV, the Fox Box, and all that stuff. Actually, before that, there was one previous thing. Um, a VHS presentation of live-action footage of boats in New York Harbor with me doing all the male voices, mostly because when they had me try the female voices, they didn't like them. And that's <laughs> called Little Tug's Big Adventure. Uh... It's not for sale at any reasonable price anymore, but if you go to my website, you can find it on Amazon for much more than you're willing to pay. But <laughs> you can see it if you want. Um, that was recorded in some guy's bedroom, which was... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I guess wasn't weird at the time. Right? <laughs> it was an interesting presentation. And then uh, things snowballed from there. I'm sure that, you know, it's funny, that person was probably very ahead of the time because now people are building full-fledged studios in their apartments. So, you know, that, that's become much more commonplace today. So we'll, we'll go with the head of his time uh, on, on Tuggy's Big Adventure. <laughs> right. um, so uh, now, now as I, correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, I certainly may be, because I, I actually don't know a whole lot about the kind of origin points of the like cartoon and anime voiceover scene in New York. But also, uh, you were not part of, part of the very first generation of folks. Uh, mm -hmm. You came in, did you come in around like early 2000s, maybe late 90s, was it? Uh, little Tug, which doesn't really count as being part of that scene, was just before 2000. Um, my big push came when I was first laid off the first time from the syndication gig, and that would have been right before September 11th, 2001. Ooh. So early 2001. Okay. Um, it was Demon Fighter Kocho, and and then yeah. That was that was right when uh, uh, I, I've, I've actually talked about this on another curb blog like ages ago. I remember because the, the the year that Yu-Gi-Oh uh, premiered in 2001, uh, that the, the 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 weekend it was supposed to premiere. On Kids WB was pushed back uh, due to mm -hmm. you know very important news coverage about 9/11 happening, mm -hmm. uh, and weirdly it it because uh, Cartoon Network was doing a thing where they were showing an episode of a Kids WB show every Friday night because I guess they had kind of a good relationship with Turner or something I'm not really sure but Yu-Gi-Oh premiered I believe first uh, in the U S on Cartoon Network the weekend before it was supposed to premiere on Kids WB a uh, little minor trivia there but. Nonetheless, so, I mean, now, I've, for many, many years now, you have absolutely been one of, like, the big guys in anime and cartoons and, and audiobooks, etc., in the, in the New York scene. My only information about the, the time before you within, like, the early to late 90s was the general story I hear from everybody was, oh, Tony Salerno got me in. Yeah, Tony Salerno. Yeah, he was the first director. But yeah, Tony, Sal Tony Salerno. Tony Salerno. Uh, so, so from having met and worked with a, a lot of these guys... Uh, do you yourself know much about what the time of like you know the early anime dubbing days with like Central Park Media and stuff like that were uh, before you entered into the scene, or is a lot of that stuff kind of a mystery to before you came in? I've heard the legends of the Central Park Media days after the fact. Um, my first introduction, I guess, would be well. Actually, I I I can kind of be the nexus for the two worlds meeting, okay. and here's how. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, the first anime gig was Michael Center Nicholas. Mm -hmm. He had his pool of of talent, and then the second thing was Pokemon. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Stewart was my first director, who I guess was the first casting director. Heard the demo, said, "Oh, bring him in. He's good for stuff." Um, then I started doing more stuff with four kids, and I was talking to Senator Nicholas and said, oh, I'm doing stuff with four kids. Said, oh, they're really tough to get in, uh, get in with. I said, well, yeah, <laughs> fine. Um, then um, he, oh, he, if he were here, he would clarify who, who came to who. But at some point, it, it came up in discussions that they were auditioning for the Ninja Turtles, and he wanted to audition for it. And he said, maybe you could help get me uh, an audition, or I maybe have offered to, maybe I could get you an audition, I don't remember. But either way, I made an inquiry, and they said, yeah, sure, bring him in. And uh, they did, and he got in as Leonardo, or uh, yeah, 
Yeah, Leonardo and the Ninja Turtles. And uh, then suddenly he got to tap into the four kids talent pool. And that's when those things sort of intermingled. Okay. Yeah, because I remember there, there was a time where I was noticing, like, a lot of crossover between, like, the MYAV pool of folks and then a lot more of the four kids guys were coming out. I, mean, mm -hmm. I, was, I was recently reminded of, oh, I totally forgot about this, but um, uh, Jungle Emperor Leo, which is a uh, beautifully terrifying movie. Uh, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's so bizarre because it is, it is literally all of the major players from Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! as these, these legendary Tezuka characters. Uh, and, 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 and it's funny because I, that was, that was uh, directed by Michael. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, just, it's just crazy because hearing like, all of the people that, that... That was one of the first things where I heard all of like, you know, the people I was so used to doing like, the cutesy Saturday morning kind of like, censored stuff to doing something where it's like, you know, it, it has the words feast on my flesh in it by uttered by Dan Green, <laughs> which I'm like, Oh my God, what am I watching? You know? Um, so no, it, it was, it was really cool to stay. Cause you know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's no mystery to, you know, a lot of the flack that four kids got from people on the internet in the early to maybe even late two thousands for a while. And, but, but it was, it was nice to hear a lot. You know, when a lot of shows would come through in the New York scene where, you know, everybody would get to really do like really, serious and and powerful performances and stuff and that made me happy because it's like you know the new york talent pool is filled with so many amazing people i mean you know for christ's sake broadway and off broadway and then radio people and all these amazing folks uh who are so talented and deserve a lot more credit than i think that they get uh in terms of like the fandom i would say um so when we get to hear you guys and stuff like i mean even with with, uh, with gundam origin which again i'm i'm biased but uh hearing everybody in in that uh, just makes me so, so satisfied to see that. Um, but, uh, so when you started at Four Kids, that was, fr from all the people I know who worked there, uh, and again, for all the flack it gets, that was kind of like a really good time for everybody, like, lucratively. Uh, when, so when you started, maybe even before, uh, you know, Sonic X came around, uh, what were kind of the early days of doing stuff at Four Kids like for you? Um, it started, let's see, well, there was a Pokemon thing, which was, was a one-off episode, and that wasn't even recorded at 4Kids, because they didn't have the 4Kids studios fully up and running. That was at the now infamous Taj Productions. Oh, oh it was still there. Yeah. Oh, wow, and I was okay. Just, I was there for just a day for one thing, and okay, cool. And then when the 4Kids thing started, uh, I got a call from, uh, I guess it would have been Eric at the time. And he brought me in actually to audition for Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm -hmm. um, one does not often speak of one's failures, but I auditioned for the narrator for Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh. Um, which was nice, but I didn't book that. But that's fine. I, but that, I, don't, I don't even. I didn't even know that there was a narrator. I, was I, an, I just. Huh. Yeah, huh. the opening sequence was. Um, my take on it was. Uh, Yuki Moto is his guy, and he, here's his backstory, and something oh, about the well, power. Well, if, if, yeah. if it makes you feel any better, I think the reason they didn't go with you is because I think they just made Yugi himself into the narrator, because that was Dan doing that, so... That's... All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, bless his heart. Um, so, yeah. And then um, when uh, the next point of contact was a call from the production team for Kirby right back at you who was interested in, in having me come read for stuff. Mm -hmm. And I managed to book the mayor in Kirby right back at you, which I remember vividly. We were out for dinner at a Chinese restaurant when the uh, call came in. Hey, we'd like to book you. I said, well, that's great. That was, that was the first real recurring role. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the promo guys uh, contacted me. Uh, I think actually it may have been Eric again. They were looking for a promo voice. Um, that was a fun call because we were moving from the city to the suburbs and I was packing up the house and I was all grimy and filthy. <laughs> and this is, <laughs> this is the fine bit of professionalism at the time. Yeah, we're auditioning for uh, the promo voice and we're doing it right now. <laughs> really? Because I'm kind of moving. And, it, and I asked my wife, Can I, would you mind if I just hop on the train downtown? To the, and I did and I hopped, uh, hopped down and uh, they kind of booked me right on this spot, apparently, for the promo stuff, and that was nice. And then they brought me in for the promos, and then they uh, brought me in for uh, fighting foodons. Ah, and yes. 
mm-hmm. Ultraman Tiga and the other weird little shows. And then larger stuff came along. Ultimate Muscle, which was an Eric Stewart um, directed great piece. Great show. Great show. Mm-hmm. Love that one. Great fun. That was my first, I guess, semi-star turn as the uh, supporting role of Meat. Um, and then that led to uh, uh, Sonic X because the same folks that recorded, uh, produced Kirby were producing Sonic were producing Sonic X and they remembered me and they really wanted me to audition for Eggman so they brought me in for that uh, with a lengthy series of callbacks uh-huh. and then <laughs> it was just a lot of word of mouth and sharing within the organization there were a couple of production teams I never worked with but mm-hmm. most of the ones that liked me would pass me around to their friends it, it seemed like you were in almost if not every single show that they did I mean when when four kids like ruled Saturday morning between you know Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh on, on WB and then uh, I guess what was the promo stuff dialing back a bit? Was that for the Fox Box before it was for Kids TV? Yep, I was the original voice of the Fox Box. If you look online, uh, I believe the the Fox Box preview reel, which was never distributed because there was, uh, if I recall correctly, it's probably okay to talk about this now. Um, the uh, they objected to Ultimate Muscle because. Uh, um, Ultimate Muscle, uh, Kid Muscle, was famous for his flatulence. Oh. And I believe they used actual flatulence sounds on the demo reel. <laughs> uh, and Toys R Us didn't like that idea. So the reels, the videos, they were VHS tapes at the time. They were pulled and never seen. But somebody found them, I think, and put them online. But I narrated that. Um, and then I was narrating the uh, first bunch of promos for four for the Fox box for the first couple of years. And then briefly the transition to f- to four kids TV. And then they decided, well, we don't want him anymore. <laughs> so I stopped to prom, but did other stuff. And then they, then they turned to that, uh, that creepy CGI, uh, Jack in the box thing that I think Sean Schummel was the, was infamously the voice of, mm-hmm. um, well, regarding all the production teams and stuff as well. So, I mean, we, we've uh, even it's funny back when when I did that original interview with you in, in 2006, uh, you were talking about how Andrew Rannells, now TV's Andrew Rannells, yeah. uh, was uh, was directing you on Sonic X. And I, I think I, I think he was like, that's right. Yeah. When we were interviewing you, I think he had just gotten on Hairspray. Uh, mm-hmm. So he was already kind of transitioning out of the anime world a little bit. And, you know, now obviously he's got Book of Mormon and all this other stuff, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but guys like him and, and Eric and uh, Chris Collet, who I've spoken with, who's very nice. A lot of those guys. Uh, the, again, all the stories I've heard from the folks that were there. I mean, like Erica Schroeder and, and, and Dion Green and Veronica Taylor, all these people. They, they talked about how much of like kind of a family it was. Uh, what was kind of your relationship yeah. with a lot of the, the guys around there? Um, as I like to point out to folks who don't understand how the freelance biz works, um, there were people who were full-time employees at Four Kids, um, mostly the directors and the producers, um, and the ones that doubled up on voices like Eric Stewart, for example. Yeah. But the rest of the talent pool were freelancers. We all had either regular jobs or lots of, of acting gigs to keep us busy, mm-hmm. and we would mix and match our schedules with four kids whenever they needed us. Hey, we need you for two hours this week. When can you come in? Well, let's see. Tuesday at lunch, I can sneak away from work and then come back Wednesday at lunch and fine. And and, and so whenever I would see anyone, if I would see anyone, it would be passing in the halls. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're coming in. I'm going, hi, how are you? Good to see you. Um, or we might on some shows be recording together, but that was usually highly unlikely because the dubs were – most of the shows were dubs and dubs are generally recorded separately in this country. Um, but so there were the occasions of shows that I would be in with people and I would never have met them until several months into the production when we just happened to be booked adjacently. One would be leaving, one would be coming in. Oh, you're from here and I know you. I've heard you. You're good. <laughs> so the times I was there were great, but they were generally few and far between. Um, when I was doing promos, I was there a lot, but I really had to sneak out of work. And my boss at the radio syndication gig at the time was a bit of a jerk. And she at uh, one point said, no two-hour lunches. If you're going to do that other thing, you can only be there for an hour. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, but I like doing this. It's fun. I get to, I get to be yes. me. <laughs> yes. You don't use my voice here. Oh, so, God yeah. almighty. Uh, I know I know you've told this story many times as well, but I, I the, the comments would kill me if I didn't at least go into the, the brief history of it. 
Uh, the story of Eggman, uh, obviously when, when you guys started, uh, as it's been stated many, many, many times by many different people, uh, they had clips of the Sonic Adventure cast to go off of. So mm-hmm. they had the late, great Dean Bristow as ref for you on, uh, on Eggman. And mm-hmm. uh, so w- when that started, I mean, I, I even actually I remember, I think even before the interview I did with you, I think it was Anime, Anime Next in Jersey, you were talking about like just how long of a process and like how much they were pushing for you and everything, you know, and, and then what kind of led into the video games and everything. And, and that's in those 13 years, things have changed. So, I mean, the cast has changed three times mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you're, and you're still like, man. Um, kind of, I guess, br- brief history of, of, of your, your time with, with the doctor. Sure. Um, yeah, the hardest part was getting in. Um, the folks from Kirby right back at you started dubbing Sonic X. They knew me, they liked me, um, and they really wanted me to audition for Dr. Eggman. So they sent me the clips. I, uh, went home and, uh, spent Oh, maybe half an hour trying to sound like Dean Bristol. I'm Dean Bristol. Listen to me. Went in, did that for my audition with more words than that, of course. Uh (laughs) But um, that was the first audition. Then there was a callback after that, came back to the exact same thing. Then there was another callback after that because apparently Sega was still not convinced. And apparently the third time was the charm. And Sega was then convinced that I should be Dr. Eggman, which was fantastic. Very little to do with Sega at the time. They were overseeing the whole production from afar. Mm. Um, For the first year or so, we were just dubbing Sonic X, and then they decided to bring the Sonic X cast into the games, and Sega would fly out a production team to direct us in the games, often on the weekends. Mm. Fantastically Mm. convenient. (laughs) But guys that I would just see in passing barely had time to to chat or get to know them, because A very tightly booked weekend because the entire cast had to shuffle in and out over and over on the weekend. Um, But that happened until 2010 when I got an interesting call from this West Coast-based woman allegedly acting as my agent in the West Coast. And I guess Sega had found her because I was listed on one of the uh, casting sites and they saw, oh, this must be his agent. Well, not really, but they called her. She called me and she said, yeah, I have this audition for you. I I think it's a role you've done before. A a Dr. Eggman. Yeah, Dr. Eggman. I I, I thought I was still doing that, but okay, go on. Um, They were re-auditioning. She sent me the sides and I re-auditioned doing exactly what I had been doing which by that time had, had migrated from not so much Dean Bristow because it's all right, right, right down here and you need a little more peaks and valleys to make the comedy happen. But I gave them the Sonic, the Dr. Eggman uh, sound that I had designed for myself by then. Mm-hmm. And miraculously, I guess, they rebooked me and that was uh, Sonic Colors and Generations and those sort of games uh, with me and the new cast. Um, and at that point they were recording everything in LA except for me which makes perfect sense because if you need me for four hours it's not really productive to just fly me out for four hours of work <laughs> right. so they booked the studio um, also I'll speak uh, badly about the agent because I'm not going to name her but um, she didn't grasp the concept of time zones uh-huh. so she called to say we're booking you it's for Tuesday at 9 o'clock Oh, is that 9 Eastern or Pacific? 9 o'clock. <laughs> All right. She gave me the place in the city to go to. I went to there at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And they said, oh, you're not here till noon. I said, yeah, I figured. <laughs> I'm down the street at Starbucks if you need me. Uh, uh, we Starbucks for a few hours, showed up at the studio, and hi, it's L.A. on the line, and a whole bunch of new people that I'd never heard. And uh, with the one exception of... Uh, uh, the lovely voice of uh, Everyone Hates Chris Thorn- Thorndike, uh, Susie um, uh, Goldish, was uh, engineering at the time. Which I thought so. was so poetically perfect of all yes. things. I don't even know if that was intentional, but it's just, I just met her recently. Yeah. Uh, she's lovely. And mm-hmm. I didn't bring that up, but I'm just like, isn't that funny? It's like, oh, now Chris, Chris lives on as the engineer of the, of the new Sonic yeah. games. <laughs> How about that? At least, for, at least for the first one. Yeah. And it was really bizarre because my first question which had to be placed, put as delicately as possible, 
So am I the only one uh, from New York? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're the only one as far as we know. Okay, because I may see some of them, and I don't know what to say or do mm. or ask. If I should yeah. see so that was fine. Um, and I heard um, they were doing some uh, a playback of a couple of the clips of of the new cast because they didn't it wasn't really necessary for me to hear the new cast, but they needed to see how something fit in with the previously recorded tracks. Mm-hmm. So I just heard the ever so briefest glimpse of what the new actor sounded like. Said, oh, that's interesting. Great. Hi, how are you? <laughs> and um, it went on from there. And then uh, a couple, a year or so later, I had another weird little session with some other guy in the room that I didn't recognize. But that turned out to be the original test record for the Sonic Boom series. Mm. Um, and he was one of the producers who I'm now fairly good friends with. He happens to live here nearby in town, so he came by. And uh, that was an interesting transition. And then the next call I got was, we'd like to fly you out for some stuff. I said, really? Okay. <laughs> Flew out to L.A. Had a lovely dinner for which I was late because the plane was late and there was traffic and who knew. And I had to stop at the hotel and shave, which I was planning to have more time to do. But... Didn't would it, that would have been my chance to meet up with the cast beforehand? But I was late. I didn't have the luxury of time. Um, and it wasn't till the next day. It may have been at the dinner, but it would sound more dramatic to say the next day when we met up at the studio to record. My question was, why are we here? <laughs> oh, we have this TV uh, series we're working on. Oh, isn't that interesting? Go on. <laughs> And we did some test records live and in person uh, uh, with um, the first episode of the series. And that was fun. And they've had me out several other times to do some behind-the-scenes B-roll interviews and stuff. And um, and various live appearances. Uh, and some Twitter takeover things, which have been very well received. Ah, yes. So it's been a very interesting recent amount of time. Um, but still most of, for example, Sonic Boom still recorded remotely because that's completely more efficient. Mm-hmm. So I would be in New York essentially talking on the internet just like I'm talking to you, and we'd record in real time, and then they'd piece me all together in the other end. Right. But it's um, been a fantastic relationship. So- Sonic has had such a strange and kind of cool journey in that it, it went for you sp- specifically – from dubbing into prelay, which is kind of unheard of, like that's such a rare uh, kind of case. But uh, what I'm kind of curious about was, so I mean, obviously with with the anime, it was it was an anime. Um, when you guys started doing the video games at Four Kids, which I guess would have started with Shadow the Hedgehog, I think mm-hmm. up until maybe Unleashed, I think was the last one. Yeah, uh, the whatever last major one. Yeah. So yeah. were those all also dubbing, or were they like partially prelay? Like, what was the process with doing those? Because that was mostly Chris the... Collet who did those, I think, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Chris Collet was uh, directing-ish. He was the local director, and then whoever happened to be there engineering, and then all the, the Sega people in either English and or Japanese. Um, it was it was prelay, but it was matching existing lengths. Okay. So we'd record our lines. We wouldn't be able to see anything except the script, but it had to fit into seven seconds. So a little quicker, a little slower, a little change of adjustment in tone. Um, the only time that there was something to see, which folks will find interesting, I've mentioned this before in places, I believe, was Sonic 06, Mm -hmm. because there was such a drastic redesign of Dr. Eggman, specifically, that they said, you should see this first. Oh, isn't that interesting? And obviously, the the way the dialogue was written, I knew that there there was a much darker tone, as it was discussing weaponry and death, and Oh, this hasn't happened, so I guess we'll have to give it more of a deeper, intense read. Fine. But, yeah, there there was nothing – just one opening sequence where there was some choreography as he was running in and and I had to match some type of uh, um, action sequence. Mm -hmm. And that was a bit of of matching just in very early um, animatic of the animation. But mostly it was prelay to time. And they would compare the lines to the original Japanese to make sure the translation was accurate. And then somehow piece it together so that it matched up flap-wise in the game. And, and now, correct me if I'm wrong on this, too. What, was, it, was it starting with the current cast, which would have been Colors Onward? Is that stuff, is it still the same way? Or is it now, do they animate to you guys first? 
and then they have the Japanese cast dubbed to you guys. The game started in Japanese uh, during the Four Kids era. Right. Um, for Colors and Generations, which was the first new cast games, I believe the U.S. took the lead on okay. those. Yeah. I know that that's definitely the case for Boom. Right, of course. And, yeah. and, and I'm guessing that we were first yeah because of the, the the comedic tone and everything was brand new um so that yeah it was all new cast new directors new production team the u.s started to take the lead on those games gotcha yeah because i think even um oh help me ken pontak and the other happy tree friend writer his name is uh, warren graf uh i think the two of them in lost world before boob came about i think that they were even directly involved with coming up with the story from like a ground level on that one uh and i could tell with that one in particular it seemed very like this is fit to you guys first and it does not feel like it's dubbing like it's it's, it it seems very much more night and day compared to the the early stuff which i think is cool because it makes sense since sonic as far as i know is far more successful in um uh english-speaking uh territories in general than it is in japan I, i believe so having you guys be at the forefront would certainly make sense and also, you know, allow for more freedom with the performances. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it, it's, been, it's been great, and I, I'm very... You know, because it's funny, I'll even go on record. I might have said this on uh, one of Some Call Me Johnny streams or something. You know, I remember that, like, when a lot of people were being, you know, a little aggressive about the, the, the cast change the first time around, and they were like, oh, except for my Pollock. They should change everybody except for my Pollock. And I'm like, all right, first of all... <laughs> Guys, they're not going to change it. Second of all, if they do change it, they're not going to keep one guy. It doesn't work that way. And lo and behold, that is exactly what they did. <laughs> and, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, I, I mean. Well, there's a, here's a perfect opportunity to spike another rumor. There are those who like to think that the first cast change for Sonic X came about because Dean Bristow had died. Right. If yes. you check the fact, yeah. Sonic X premiered in 2003. Uh, Dean didn't pass until 2005, which, yes, happens to be when the game change happened. But um, chances are that was already in the works by the time that happened. Yes. But no. We and and also not not to be not to be dark, but somebody else in the cast of that previous cast had also passed away. The voice of I, I forgive me. The voice of E of Gamma. I can't remember the guy's name. Unfortunately, Steve Brody. Steve Brody. Steve Brody passed away. Unfortunately, God rest his soul. And that's not usually a reason to do that. So because it's it's right. a little more complicated than that. Everybody. So yeah, like yeah, that's. But you know, nonetheless. Um, so, anyway, we're shifting away from Sonic for five seconds, because we've gone on about sure. for 30 years. Um, but I do want to talk about the prelay stuff, because now especially, you know, I, I imagine Turtles was a, was a real, and, and Viva Pinata was a nice taste of that uh, mm-hmm. for all of you guys. But with Boom now, and especially because I know you have gotten to do some stuff with everybody in person, like, like once in a while. Oh, yeah. Um, what, I mean, like, that show, I, I always kind of word it this way, but that, that's got to be such a gift when you have people like Roger and Cindy and Colleen and Travis who are all really funny and like and and these you know everybody can say what they will about Sonic Boom whatever Rise of Lyric ah, we get it you got the the ver- these versions of the of like the five main characters are I think the best that we've had of them in a very very long time maybe even ever uh just because like they're a lot more rounded in personality there's a lot more emotional range to them in general uh and I've been really happy with you with what and I actually haven't even uh, I haven't been keeping up with Sonic X as much as I, I should be. Oh, so, sorry, Sonic Boom, not Sonic X. Sonic, mm-hmm. X, is, Sonic X is over. Um, yeah. But uh, but just any clips I see, it's just like I I can always so clearly hear you guys having a great time on on the recording of that. Yeah, we it's a tremendous amount of of fun. Even working remotely is almost fun. It's kind of it's weird being the third wheel, or I guess in this case the eighth wheel. <laughs> 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 my math is off but yeah because i'm i'm on the other end of the line between takes they're all together and they can chat amongst themselves and i can kind of attempt to to chime in remotely hey guys i had something to say hey, hey guys <laughs> and then even when visiting in person it's always like oh it's the crazy uncle who you only see on thanksgiving what's he doing here <laughs> so every 
every time I'm there, it's like, oh, Thanksgiving, haven't seen you in a year, kids. How are you? Good to see you. Um, so it's a lot of getting reacquainted and, and trying to find my in-person rhythm and how I fit in um, off mic. But um, yeah, it's just it's fantastic just to be able to to essentially do an old school radio play, which is really what it's what they refer to just the dialogue record because you're just recording dialogue and you're imagining what's going on in your head and you're having fun and playing stuff out and seeing seeing how it works um, with almost no rehearsal. Uh, we had a table read the first episode, uh, but otherwise, here's the script a, a day or so in advance. Look it over. Some of them don't. <laughs> and uh, we will take a first take. And surprisingly, the first take is often the one they choose. And I think to myself, really? I want to do that again. I, OK, yeah, it's fine. Seems, I, seems pretty common. I hear I hear that a lot happening <laughs> with. Yeah. Um, the, the, the live events, uh, the, the last couple of live events you guys have been doing have also been a lot of fun with uh, seeing all of the, the lead folks there and everything. Um, the, uh, even with all the technical hiccups of the Sonic 20th anniversary events was still very, very entertaining and you guys, it was great seeing you guys. <laughs> <there. Yeah. laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that was. Uh, uh, no, no, but no, even again, like it was actually really, really cool and it was great to see all that stuff and uh, I, I don't, I, I'm sure I don't, well, I don't know if it's even started yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to what you guys will be doing for, uh, project 2017 quote unquote, uh, which will be, I, you know, I, I think they said late next year. Uh, but, uh, oh, also my favorite part of one of those was I loved when, um, Aaron was talking about like, Oh, did you guys know that Mike was the voice of black doom also? And if you're like, <clears throat> uh, um, Aaron, I, uh, mm, uh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. Shemmel somewhere was... being like, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm very prideful yeah. of that character. Thank you very much. <laughs> that, was an, that was an awkward moment where I, I decided, well, if, uh, that, that came over in the pre-meeting um, lunch thing. And um, since a lot of the bit parts, and I don't mean to, there are no small parts, just small actors. Yeah. Um, but some of the things that, that just take... 15 minutes of my time i'll forget once i leave the room mm -hmm. so yes i the black doom sounded familiar the name rang a bell and i'll take aaron's word over mine i could have looked it up but yeah, okay if assuming you've done some googling i i don't need to do it here at the table and apparently i should have done some googling at the table we'll see that's okay i'm sure sean will care meanwhile somewhere he's like Grab! <laughs> my God! um yeah. now love you sean um but, uh, but so with, with prelay recording too, though, like, so do you feel like after all this time with the character, even with the limitations of, of you know, having the, the Japanese first and, and like with the, the time restrictions and everything, do you feel like all this time with the character has led itself to now where you have this freedom to go a lot more bomb, and especially because like Sonic Boom is a bombastic, you know, over the top kind of show, I think, I think it goes without saying. Um, do you feel like all of that has, 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 because if anything, uh, not, not even just all of it, but like everything you've gotten to do where you have like a prelay show that's on Cartoon Network. And as far as I know, is still doing pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. do you feel like all of that has prepped you for like, wow, now I'm, I'm in this big league thing with all these huge guys that are on all these other Cartoon Network shows. I because like, you know, you look at the rest of them too, like they're all doing these big things and, and you're in there and you're, you're on, you're on the ball with them the whole time like it's it's really kind of incredible to see like you mixed in there and it's like you just fit like so well yeah it's an it's an interesting place to be because i don't really have any hollywood cred any la street cred um and that's mostly because by the time i started doing this and teaching the radio thing i started a family and they're they've got school and my wife has uh, hatred of LA. And so we don't, did I say that out loud? And so, um, I'm content with my New York thing. I'm visiting LA is great. I'm recording remotely in LA is great. Yes. I'd love to do more stuff, but it wouldn't be practical mm. at this time. Yeah. So yes, I'm grateful for what I have. I'm grateful for what I'm doing here. Um, if LA would like to go have me out for any reason, that'd be great too. <laughs> but yeah, it's an, a, a, a weird, admixture that's probably not quite the, the word but it's just a, a weird situation of um it's like i'm overlaid on a piece of transparency film <laughs> into an existing scene <laughs> that shows my age that's obviously not the technology but i guess being photoshopped into the scene is not quite the right analogy but no i i 
I, 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 under, I understand. The, the artist here is, is getting your terminology. I get it. I um, like a color form. All right. <laughs> Is that, that's an even worse one, I, but yeah, you get it. Well, well, on, on that note too, I mean, you you've done so much stuff like in your time, you know, in, in New York and, and outside of it. Are are there any other you know like kind of specific goals or things that like you want to? Aspire? I mean, I, and actually, one I didn't even talk about uh, uh, the when the X Men uh, motion comics were being done for a while at uh, at Edge Studio, um, mm-hmm. you got to be the Beast, which was massive. Uh, mm-hmm. And you know you've got to do a whole lot of, and you have you know all these iconic characters and stuff. You know, you know not even just Eggman, like with Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and all these characters. Um, you know, like are there are there any like other kind of like specific like bucket list things or like specific goals that you want to try to strive for, like things you want to push towards for? Because like like with with your career as it continues forward, my bucket list is essentially avoid unemployment. <laughs> I people always ask, "What's your favorite role?" I always say, "My favorite role." Well, but now I say I don't play favorites, but my favorite role is always the next one. It's I'm I'm constantly auditioning and happy to book any darn thing I can. Yes, I'd like to book something huge and theatrical and prime timey, but you know, the fact that I'm currently voicing stuff for Scott's Lawn Care, Shilling Furnish uh, Fertilizer. That's a fantastic thing. I heard myself on the radio the other day. How cool is that? I heard you in a Hooters so, yeah, commercial, and it was awesome. Exactly. Thank you very much. And then I went to Hooters, and they didn't care who I was. But that's <laughs> um, So, yeah, I, yes, I'd love to work on something huge, but I'd also just love to work on anything. Yes. Well, wouldn't we all? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I guess to uh, to kind of close things out because this is this is now the end of, of Voice October 2016 with you ending on a high note as far as I'm concerned. Um, sure. I, uh, I, I I know cliche probably asked all the time, but uh, feel feel it is important because I think especially to go out on uh, general kind of advice for you know because again I, I think especially now more than ever more and more and more and more people are not only like getting interested in VO, but are breaking into VO, uh, like a lot more quickly than, than ever, uh, Mm -hmm. any kind of specific things that you would, uh, advise to maybe, uh, you know, people who are just starting out, maybe getting some of their first auditions or their first jobs, even, uh, uh, particularly in anime or in video games, or maybe even prelay if if they're so, as so lucky to get that up front, anything like that, that you are, are oft to tell people at cons or otherwise. Yeah, don't de- don't deny the larger world of theater from an experience point of view. Um, to be a voice actor, it's not just somebody who can make funny voices. You've got to put acting behind those voices. So get some theater experience. Community theater is an excellent thing if you have that near you. Um, acting classes also an excellent thing. Again, if you have that near you, if you want to go to a to college and major in theater, which I didn't, then by all means do that. Obviously, I, I didn't need to do. Never mind. But yeah, it's fine. Um, but make sure if you're going to suddenly be alone in a room pretending to talk to people who aren't there, you have had the experience of speaking to other actors on a stage and reacting to them. Because the essence of acting is reacting. You've got to know what it's like to be with people that don't really exist in the real time in which you're recording. Um, if you have the luxury of working with other people ensemble style, also you've got to, to know what it's like to be able to pick up cues and, and keep the scene flowing. Um, and, and get familiar with the concept of rejection. My folder on my computer of... of uh, Unbooked auditions overflows constantly (laughs) because I audition for things constantly and book a small fraction. And that's surprisingly typical. So you you don't obsess over the audition you just did. I just banged out two auditions tonight. I've forgotten what they are pretty much without saying, what was that? And then if I should happen to get a call saying, hey, they need you. Well, that's great. I forgot what it was for. Um. There was some other piece of advice when I, when I stepped off on my tangent. Um, <laughs> come back, come back. Yes, thank you so much. Um, you got to be able to support your your voice with acting to make it more than something. And also don't don't try and, and pigeonhole yourself into just uh, video games or cartoons. Not only is there lots more work available than that, 
but that work can and is often few and far between and also not always as lucrative as you might think. Mm -hmm. Part of the discussions going on with the whole big video game strike that's happening now is actors pointing out, yeah, we get big money for big jobs, but four hours once a month. Hey, that's not quite full time. Thank if, you. If you're even lucky for once a month, which exactly uh, that guy in the L.A. Times didn't seem to understand. But nonetheless, yeah, right. <laughs> so that's why I'm quite content to be doing a game one day, a commercial the next day, a cartoon the other day and some boring political spot the, the fourth day because I love working. Mm. My my Google calendar abhors a vacuum. So. <laughs> Um, well, true words cannot be spoken. I appreciate thank that. You. Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for making the time such last second, last 24 uh -huh. hours. You respond. You took sure. the call. You're great. Um, you've done one things for me in the past. It's oh, the least I can do. Swap it. Uh, hope you come back soon. Would love to go to the, the, the broken egg again. Like we did that one time and sure. make, make more jokes about, about eggs. Um, I say a picture on uh, social media is quite amusing. Yay. Uh, obviously, Sonic Boom Season 2, uh, Sonic 2017, I think it's fair to say Eggman will probably be in it, and that'll be next year sometime, but... Uh, nice. It was always unknown to yes. me. Yes. Uh, and then uh, any other particular things you want to plug? Anything you got coming down the pipe that you want people to be Yeah, you know, it just got released. I'm in Smite, which is apparently a big online oh. game with kids. I play a vaguely offensive, uh, ethnic-sounding character. Um, if you go to YouTube, you can check out It's a Mic in my playlist. The Sound of Mike has recent videos. Um, and among them, there are a whole bunch of web videos I did for the Epicurious channel on uh, the secret history of pasta and mac and cheese and other stuff, which eventually turned out to be a series of ads for Buitoni. Um, I am also did a thing, uh, a similar food-based thing on various types of meats, dried, cured meats. I don't know if that's been fully animated and produced yet. Um, there's always weird little stuff that people find me in, in the cutout bin at the supermarket. I found myself there, and they like to try and shame me for them online, and I point out, sometimes plumbers install hot tubs, sometimes they unclog toilets. <laughs> so uh, you can look for me. Uh, everyone's favorite. Okay, I'll name them. I'll look for me in the cartoon section uh, in my store there in the cereal aisle where the kids will accidentally find them ratatouing and what's up and mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> All little, your favorite little, little, uh, panda, little panda fighter, all, yes, that, all that good stuff. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't bring myself to buy them, but mm. I did see them there. <laughs> I did. I have a copy of Rat Tat Toying from when it first came out, but these are now four uh, four films on one one DVD, and it's like that, that that can just stay right there. It's fine. Uh, but on, on yeah. Mike on Mike's YouTube channel, I would per I would personally recommend a uh, little. Uh, music video a song of Michael's creation uh, called Lizzie that I uh, had the pleasure of doing the I, I, I put animation in quotation marks more like it was more like motion graphics but uh, uh, based on Elizabeth Taylor's many many love ex exploits with her mm -hmm. seven seven boyfriend emeralds <laughs> yes um, and uh, that, that was like right when I was finishing up college can't believe that was like my god like four or five years ago now Jesus <laughs> It's um, it's so dated now. And, yeah, well, it was, it, was fun. it was it was it was fun though. No, it uh, was that that was a dream come true because that 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 song had to get out of my head. It was a tribute to the great Tom Lehrer who did a, a song on the same theme about another woman with many husbands that was lost to history. Mm. And I figured, well, you know, someone with a lot of husbands, and then there's that song. I should mash that up and do my own. <laughs> and then I figured, what would make people want to hear this? Oh, we'll put video to it. <laughs> who makes good videos? You do! Yes! Anyway. Oh, God, why? Uh, no, I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, Smite, I, I'm excited about. I, I am also in that with you. Hooray! Um, yes. And in fact, actually... Uh, I don't know when it will be coming out, but there's another project that will be... Actually, we're going to be recording soon that I believe that Michael and I will both be in, mayhaps. Um, I'll say no more than that. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike might not, might not even know what I'm talking about, actually. Uh, but, yes. If I do, I've forgotten already. Good, so good. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, was that? Earlier? I don't know. Yeah, Thank you. Um, well, I, everybody, that's going to bring Voice October 2017 to an end. Uh, so, Mike, thank you again so much for making the time. This was great. Uh, so, actually, before I close out, uh, some call me Johnny, who, Mike, you're familiar with on a little mm -hmm. uh, charity stream we did earlier this year. 
Uh, my good friends, some call me Johnny. Uh, the day that this is going to be coming out on Saturday the 5th is going to be doing another charity stream. Uh, well, it's, it's the Pokemon Master Race. Yes, it is hilarious as it sounds mm -hmm. and offensive as it sounds. Uh, where he and some of his friends are going to be getting together and racing through Pokemon 1, uh, Red and Blue, uh, catching them all, just like uh, the, the good old days. And um, I'm going to be joining in for that a little bit. I might, maybe I'll be doing some commissions or something, not sure. And uh, tomorrow, uh, the day after this comes out, on the 6th, I'll be having some good announcements to give about uh, the Train of Magical Expertise five-year anniversary uh, celebration week. So look forward to that. Lots of cool stuff happening for both of us. But uh, I, I that's believe in the fifth, uh, they'd be competing with another charity stream that the Sega social media team is doing. So if you'd like to multitask and maybe keep two windows open on your computer and oh, yes. uh, master the art of dichotic listening. My God, uh, yes, please do that. Uh, what's, yeah. what's, the, what's the stream uh, happening uh, with that one? It's on Twitch. Uh, it's uh, uh, Aaron and uh, Sergio from the Sonic social media team. They'll be playing 24 hours of games. Oh, wow. Well, oh, jo so. jo Johnny did the same. Perhaps they got that idea from him. Be like, oh, we should do that. <laughs> we should, we should play should, We should play Sonic games for 24 hours. Great idea. They, sh <laughs> they should battle each other remotely somehow. Oh, my God. oh I love that. Jesus. Uh, cool. All right. Well, I'll have a link to that and all that good stuff and everything. Everybody, in the comments below, uh, if you have any... Uh, memories of, of your favorite Mike Pollock roles, maybe meeting him at a con or, or something of some kind you want to share, uh, please do. If you have any, uh, any, any accolades to give to the, the lovely New York talent pool for their work on uh, various anime and games and audiobooks and otherwise, we'd love to hear your thoughts about that. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed Voice October 2016. I'm sure I'll be doing it again with some other lovely guests next year because I God knows I know way too many people that love to talk about this shit over and over. Uh, but for the time being, that's going to do it. That's it for me. That's it for Michael. And we will catch you all on the flip side. Fare thee well.